It's a journey of, of finding hope and then losing it again. And then, and then finding it again in very dark circumstances. But finding it as a small, small ember, a glowing little chance that even when we lose hope sometimes, we can, we can always, always find it. It's a journey that has taught me to understand what freedom is and what the pursuit of freedom is, that it's not an ideal that's out there somewhere, but that freedom is you. Freedom is me. It is us. We are freedom. For over 37 years, Robert Mugabe ruled Zimbabwe. And he destroyed our nation in ways that are difficult for me to explain. Economically, our nation had collapsed multiple times under his rule. In 2008, we ended up with a $100 trillion note as part of our regime of currencies. That's one and 12 zeros. The number of people that had lost their lives that had been brutalized over the years are too many to mention. And at the height of corruption in Zimbabwe, as a father, I was frustrated. I was failing to look after my, my two infant children. And so, on April 19, 2016, I recorded a video. It was a four minute video, and I posted that video on YouTube. It was a rant, it was a personal expression of frustration with what Zimbabwe had become. In the same video, I spoke to my fellow Zimbabweans and I said to them, it was time that we stood up and we remembered what this flag was all about. The promise it made, not just to us, but to our children. And that it was our duty, and nobody else's, to speak up, to challenge the authoritarianism of Robert Mugabe. This little video then gave birth to a movement that I never, never in my wildest dreams expected would have begun. Millions of people rallied behind it. And in the months to come, we forced the government to listen, to hear us, but they wouldn't. I remember I made one more video, and in it I made a daring call to our citizens to boycott work, to boycott school, and to bring the entire country to a complete stand still, as a way of saying to Robert Mugabe, enough was enough. Who was I? I was nobody. And yet millions of people responded to that call, and one of the first citizen-driven actions began to unfold in Zimbabwe. Hundreds upon thousands of people began to find their voice, to speak up, to stand up, and to say that they wanted a better future. But because of that, Robert Mugabe jailed me. I was arrested immediately after that protest had been a success. And I was charged with attempting to overthrow the government. I couldn't believe that this is what it had, be, what it had come to, essentially. But there was something that I think Robert Mugabe himself and his regime did not expect, and that so many people, through this movement that we called this flag, citizens' movement, had found their voice and were now scaling the wall of fear. They were now standing up in their own ways, even just as one voice, to speak truth to power. 
On the day that I was brought to court, thousands of people gathered demanding my release. It was something that I never expected, something that none of us thought that we would ever see. But this journey of learning to speak had begun. And I think sometimes people may not understand that when you live in a nation where you have been intimidated for so long, challenging authority is a scary, scary thing to do. And yet here we were as Zimbabweans finding our voice and learning that freedom was about us doing what we needed to do in the face of injustice. I was released because of all these people that showed up and immediately I had to take my family out of Zimbabwe. I learned that whilst I was in prison, my wife who was pregnant with our third child and my two children had all been threatened in separate incidences. My children had been threatened with death at their school and my wife had been threatened with rape at her workplace. We were able to bring them to safety. Soon after my daughter was born whilst in exile, I remember sitting thinking to myself that we still have a job to do in Zimbabwe. And so I made the difficult decision to leave my family and go back home to Zimbabwe to continue the struggle because I've always believed that every generation cannot subcontract their struggle. We must be at the forefront of fighting for the things that we believe. On arrival in Zimbabwe on the 1st of February 2017, I was arrested immediately at the airport. I was charged with treason and I was thrown into the maximum security prison. If found guilty, I was going to face over 20 years in prison. I thought that this was this was the end. But we fought on, and I was released on bail, and as soon as I came out, I felt that this was not the end, but the beginning. Throughout that whole year, we inspired protest after protest. We were arrested again and again, and yet we knew that at some point, we would have a breakthrough. By the end, of that year 2017, something incredible took place in Zimbabwe. Something that nobody ever dreamed would happen. Robert Mugabe's own party threw him out. We as the people were overjoyed. We never thought that in our lifetime we could see something like this. And so in the hope that our nation was receiving a chance to literally have a second birth, to have a second chance, we joined in. We joined in demanding that we have a fresh start. We joined in demanding that we would see an end to corruption, that we would see an end to injustice and an end to the violation of our democracy and our constitutional rights. The military who were at the forefront of this promised us that we would have free and fair elections. They promised us that we would have a prosperous nation, that there would be a departure from the old ways of doing things, and that Zimbabweans would be free to be able to stand up and to be able to do whatever they wanted to do in making sure that their nation went forward. It is... It is hard for me to describe for you in words the disappointment. The disappointment that we felt when on the 1st of August 2018, one day after these promised elections, the military was deployed on the street against protesting people who felt the election had been rigged and they fired live ammunition into the crowds and killed people. It was a shocking moment. We couldn't believe it. How did we get here? We had the chance. We had a moment for freedom. It was taken from us. This man, the new president, has allowed corruption in just two years to grow so fast that it has destroyed our infrastructure even further, has allowed our hospitals to go without basic things like aspirin, bandages, and latex gloves. 
But we learned one thing under Robert Mugabe, that when you are pressed hard by a dictator, you don't sit down, you stand up. That you keep speaking, that you keep rising, because the freedom we ask for is not what they give to us, but it is what we have inside of us. And so protest after protest, we have carried on. They have beaten us, but we have carried on. In January of 2019, this year, I decided that I would make another video speaking about the hardships that our nation was facing and how it was time for the president and his government to review the corruption that they had allowed and to, and to allow us the opportunity to be a free nation. Unfortunately, I was arrested on January 16, 2019. And once again, I was thrown into Chikurubi Maximum Security Prison, where I spent three weeks facing a charge, a fresh charge of subversion and attempting to overthrow the government. I cannot tell you how disappointed I was, not so much because I was arrested, but because the men who I was arrested with, who I met in that prison, had been beaten so badly, their backs and their legs bled. They had broken limbs because soldiers jumped on those legs until they broke. I sat with my head in my hand and one prisoner, I'll never forget, walked up to me, a man who was serving a long sentence, and this is what he said to me. He said to me, Pastor, if you can ignore the high walls and the prison guards, if you can ignore the chains and the many days of isolation, if you can think and speak like a free man, then you are freer than those who are free. I walked out of that prison holding my flag and with a fresh resolution that we would continue to seek justice for our nation, to allow people to exercise their constitutional right to speak as free men, to protest and to challenge government because that is what we should be allowed to do. You see, freedom or the lack of it is, is really a result of what you and I decide to do with the different situations of injustice that we are faced with. We are freedom in every moment that we refuse to be silenced. We are freedom in every moment that we refuse for the handcuffs to convince us that we have lost hope. We are freedom in every moment that we are arrested and we leave the jails and the courts and we go right back to demanding the very thing that they arrested us for. I've learned that hope is not a feeling, but that it is a practice that you must walk every single day. What we have given birth to over the last couple of years is not one voice, it is not Ivan. It is multitudes upon multitudes who refuse to be silenced. It is the voices that keep speaking and that keep picking apart the propaganda of our government. It is the doctors who are on strike right now as I speak who have refused to go back to work because they don't want to watch people die because of the lack of medicines in their hospitals. It never happened, but today it has happened because we realize that we are freedom. In the next couple of days, I go back to Zimbabwe. I was only allowed to leave on temporary release of my passport after my mother and my father submitted title deeds to their home as surety for my return. Now, I do not know what the trial will hold. I do not know when we will be tried, but what I do know is that freedom is not what they take away from me as punishment or what they give to me as a gift because it was never theirs to take in the first place. But that freedom is you, and freedom is me. We are freedom. Zimbabwe. <laughs> May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.